my name is Miranda Atti and I'm here at the Maisto e Associati booth at the 73rd IFA Congress in London. And joining me is Philip Baker of the Field Court Tax Chamber. Philip, great to have you with me. Thanks very much. We're here to talk about tax disputes, resolutions and PE. Mm -hmm. And can I start by asking you, in the last few years, tax authorities have increased the number of audits regarding PE and tax residents of multinationals, also by virtue of BEPS. Do you think the EU Dispute Resolution Directive will be more helpful to avoid tax, double taxation compared to treaty arbitration? I, it's very hard to say at this moment. What we've really got are two patterns for dispute arbitration. Your first point is absolutely right. There is no doubt that more tax authorities are disputing the existence of permanent establishments, the attribution of profits to permanent establishments, and that's giving rise to a lot more disputes. They're not being settled by mutual agreement procedure, so arbitration is the answer. And we've got these two patterns. The OECD pattern in the MLI and the EU pattern in the um, Dispute Resolution Directive. Very interesting to see how that pans out and it's very good to have two different approaches so we can see which one proves to be better. My money is probably on the EU Dispute Resolution Directive for reasons that we might come on to in a moment. Absolutely. And are there any specific issues concerning the application of the directive or the MLI arbitration to disputes on the tax residents of companies? Well, I would say the big issue for all of this is the participation of the taxpayer, because traditionally the taxpayer has been outside knocking on the door saying, let me in, give me a seat at the arbitration, whereas now at least one of the patterns actually does provide rather more for taxpayer participation and I think we're going to see that that becomes uh, more and more of an issue and more important that the taxpayers are involved in the process. Aside from that, the independence, the procedure that's followed, in particular whether we go down the line of baseball arbitration or we have more reasoned arbitration, I personally believe that all arbitral decisions, whether they're baseball or not, they should be accompanied by reasons given by the the arbitrators and we'll see whether that wins out as well. And you yourself have recently proposed the setting up of a standing committee under Article 10 of the Directive. Why would that be desirable? Well, it, to be fair, um, I would co-authored, along with a number of other people, an article, and actually um, the principal authors of that did most of the work, but it's actually something in the Directive itself. Article 10 provides for a standing committee, but it's not really very clear what role that standing committee is going to have. Potentially, this could be a whole new dawn for a sort of standing arbitral quasi-court. On the other hand, it could end up being simply a body that reviews procedures. So we suggested that this could be a permanent independent body Emphasis on being independent, not just the tax authorities, in which case you know, there have been calls for decades for a, a standing international tax tribunal or an international tax court. This could be the beginning of that new development. It's very exciting and it's something we shall see occurring in the future. It will be fascinating to see what happens next. Philip, thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you.